Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and from His only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I just need to again say thank you to the ladies who sang this morning. What a beautiful anthem to move us into this season. I must confess that I'm feeling a bit of pressure today regarding my sermon. Each of the past two weeks, first Pastor Steve and then Pastor Tim began with a confession. You know where I'm going. Each week my ears perked up at their stated desire to make public confession of something. And I thought, oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> Big letdown. <laughs> Pastor Steve confessed that the Gospel of Mark was his least favorite gospel. Big whoop. <laughs> Pastor Tim confessed that Advent was his favorite season of the church year. Hold the presses. <laughs> Although he also confessed liking all of the other seasons. Nice recovery. But again, big whoop. If that's the most serious stuff that they've got to confess, I'm either in really good company or in very serious trouble. The serious stuff that I bring to the altar rail is way bigger than that. But for the sake of maintaining a bit of dignity and self-respect, I decided to simply confess that I'm feeling a bit of pressure today, following the excellent sermons that each of them preached the past two weeks. Strangely enough, our Gospel lesson from the Gospel of St. John begins with John the Baptist making a confession. In verse 20, the word confessed is actually used twice as he confesses who he is not. John's confession is prompted by the question raised by the priests and Levites who had been sent from Jerusalem. Who are you? My mind sometimes makes some really odd connections. So when I read these words this past week, I thought of the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, an Advent special, right? Why that movie? Who knows? But in that movie, as Robert Redford and Paul Newman, as Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid have fled to South America, they find themselves being chased by a posse led by some tenacious trackers. No matter what they did, they could not throw the posse off of their scent. And several times in exasperation, looking back at their pursuers, they asked the question, who are those guys? As time went on and the posse got closer, they had some clarity regarding the identity of those guys. Well, just so in our text and in the following verses, as time goes on, some clarity comes to that question regarding John. Who are you? Who are you? If asked that question, each of us would need to answer the question at least slightly differently because each of us is a unique human being. If I were asked that question, I would answer, I'm a husband, father, grandfather. I'm a son, a brother, a cousin, an uncle, a nephew, a friend, a pastor. I'm an American, I'm a child of God, and there would be more that could be added. Sometimes the context changes the answer to the question. One Sunday after the 11 o'clock service, I was standing right around in here, the altar rails were in place, and the young girl was moving very uh, deliberately. She had a place to go from that side of the sanctuary to this side of the sanctuary, and she comes just strolling by very deliberately, raises a hand, waves at me, and says, Hi, God. I thought, I thought to myself, oh, I must have preached a good sermon today. 
Um, but uh, I, I, as pastors, every once in a while, because children see us in these leadership roles, occasionally they confuse us with Jesus and with God, and in my case, with Santa Claus. Um, but my identity as God was quickly burst a few moments later when in the back here, there are two bathrooms, a women's and a men's, for as the choirs they get ready, worship leaders, pastors, a young boy came shuffling out of the men's bathroom with his pants around his ankles, asking, will you wipe my butt? <laughs> From God to wiper a butt in two minutes or less. I simply replied, let me go find your dad. A humbling experience. Who are you? That was the question asked of John by the priests and the Levites. Rumors quickly spread regarding his work in the wilderness causing people to wonder if he was the long-awaited Messiah. And if not the Messiah, was he Elijah? And if not Elijah, was he a prophet? And if none of those identities were his, what did he then have to say about himself? They continued to press him for an answer. Who are you? His answer was a quote from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 40, verse 3. I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the, of the Lord. And then the Gospel of John, verse 7, says, He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. Today, as we have lit the third candle of the Advent wreath, the shepherd's candle, we are reminded that they, the shepherds, were among the first human beings to see the newborn Christ child. And when they left that humble, stable setting, after kneeling down and worshiping this tiny newborn king, they, as they left, they did so testifying to the light, glorifying God for all that they had heard and seen. Like the shepherds, like John the Baptist, our challenge in this Advent season is to testify to the light. When asked, who are you? I can say for myself, at least, I am one who is sent to testify to the light. That'd be interesting to try that out with them all. We'll see how that works. How do we do that? How do we testify to the light? I think that our scripture readings for today are really full of examples. From Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, rejoice always. There are some folks who always seem to have a dark cloud hanging over them. When they enter a room, the temperature goes down. When you ask them how they're doing, there is never once a positive word to be offered. There are others than the ones who bring joy into your presence with the biblical philosophy of Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No matter what the challenge, no matter what the adversity, rejoicing always. Pray without ceasing. When we're feeling powerless in life, Claim the strength and the presence of the one who has the power. Many of you were searching for ways to assist the Hassenbein family during Malia's time in the hospital. And because she was down in Los Angeles at Children's Hospital, relatives were taking care of Tyler. We were looking for stuff to do. And uh, at, at some of your prodding and inquiry, uh, talking with the family, we announced that there would be a prayer service on a Sunday night to do something tangible. Many of you showed up for that service with little notification that we were gathering. Photos and videos were sent to the Hassenbein family afterwards at Children's Hospital, and you have no idea how important and valued your presence here that night was. Your presence here that night 
was testifying to the light. By turning to the light, you were testifying to it. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. This one is difficult to do when the world seems to be crumbling around you. But all of us know people who seem to be able to do this. And by thanking God in difficult circumstances, they testify to the light. And then the prophet Isaiah in our Old Testament lesson offers additional suggestions as to how we might testify to the light. Bring good news to the oppressed. One expression of this in our midst is the men and women of ascension involved in jail ministry. You can participate even vicariously in this by supporting jail ministry as our December benevolence. There's some information on the back of the newsletter. But there are other kinds of, uh, of oppression besides being incarcerated. Sometimes there's oppression even in our own homes. And as we become sensitive to each other, we can become the bringer of good news. Bind up the brokenhearted. Hearts break figuratively for many reasons. Separation, divorce, broken and stressed relationships of every description, job loss, poor health, and the list goes on. Be Christ's presence to each other. This evening, for example, Pastor Steve is kind of representing our staff. Uh, there's a gathering here tonight of a, called, uh, for a service called Compassionate Friends Memorial Service. These are families who have lost a child, and they come together in this season to support and, and love each other through that. We have the following Sunday a blue Christmas service. Not everyone sings joy to the world in this season, because of life circumstances, and we provide an opportunity to come together and to support each other. Um, bind up the brokenhearted. Comfort those who mourn. We had 22 candles on this altar on All Saints Sunday, and already there's a list drawing for next All Saints Sunday. And in addition to um, comforting those who've lost human um, relationships. Even there are other relationships that break hearts. We had a special gathering in this sanctuary to give God thanks and to say goodbye to our dear helping dog friend, Frida, that many of you have come to know. Take time to listen, to embrace, to give comfort to those who mourn losses of every description. This is certainly not an exhaustive list of ways in which you can testify to the light, but it is a list, maybe a starting point, and there are lots of other ways. Perhaps at this point we turn back to John the Baptist, who lifts up the matter of baptism as he's questioned about baptism by the priests and Levites. In our baptism, we were given a baptismal candle and challenged to let our light so shine before others that they might see our good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. If we were but able to, to live out the promises made in our baptism by our parents, by godparents, by our congregation, we would, like John, be testifying to the light. Who are you? If I'm asked that, I would say, not God, but I can point you in the right direction. All of you know how to point someone in the right direction. I would go on to say, I am a baptized, loved, forgiven child of God. Like the shepherds, like John, I am a witness to the light. That's who I am. Who are you? Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, guard and keep our hearts and our minds through faith. In Christ Jesus our Lord.